got stung again. Yes, on my face. This is the moment that Nash scratched his back on coral reefs. So there is not a lot of talk about um, when content creators, photographers, whatever, go to on these trips. Like if it's a content creator trip or if you're going specifically to take photos and videos like of a hotel. Um, as a married couple, like how... Good morning guys, we are going diving today with our friends and wanted to bring you along with us. We were just about to leave from our house, you can see Nash back there, and Nash couldn't find his snorkel so now we're going to a dive shop right now to pick up a snorkel so he can breathe while we're out there <laughs> snorkeling around. But first I had to get some caffeine. These are my favorite little things. It's Mio Energy. I drink them all the time. Then I picked up Nash's favorite drink. It's the Arizona Teas. He only likes mango and watermelon. Last stop before we went diving, I got a Starbucks. We finally secured a snorkel. Um, we went to two different dive shops, but this one looks like it's gonna be really nice. I think Nash is excited about it. Are you excited about it? Yes. It's not a Walmart crappy one. Yes, exactly. It's not like a flimsy plastic one. It's actually like really nice. We are meeting up with some friends and gonna go diving. Uh, what else do we have planned for today? I have no idea. We might go to the mermaid yeah. cave. Maybe. We might go to the mermaid caves. Yes. Secured my Starbucks. I always get a, this is a green tea matcha latte with coconut milk and it is cold but not iced so I've noticed that when you put ice in it it um, you don't get as much matcha so anyways that's my little tip and trick for the bucks and Nash got a juice he secured his 99 cent Arizona juice best deal on the island best deal on the island if you're traveling to Oahu, you definitely have to take this highway. This is the H3 and it has the most beautiful views. Then we went free diving. Look how beautiful and clear this water is. It was so pretty that day. I didn't know how to free dive for the longest time. I didn't know how to clear my ears. Once I figured out how to clear my ears, it was much easier to dive deeper. Now I can dive 35 feet to 40 feet deep. Then we explored the ocean with our friends. We were looking for sea turtles and checking out all of the marine life. Sometimes I'm nervous I'm gonna see a shark, but I've actually never seen a shark in the wild while free diving in Hawaii or snorkeling. I've only seen sharks on actual shark dives on the North Shore of Oahu. So this is the moment that Nash scratched his back on coral reefs. So he took his new Insta360 down there and decided to sit right by the corals. Ouch! I felt so bad for him. Uh, his back was bleeding when he came up from this dive. So Nash and I decided to compete against each other, trying to both blow ring bubbles. We were kind of unsuccessful. They weren't very good at all, but <laughs> let us know who you think did better at blowing ring bubbles. After our competition, we headed deeper out into the water and we saw some scuba divers. I had to wave and say hello. For the rest of the diving videos, I'm just gonna play some music and you can check out all of the things that we saw on our dive.
I feel like I'm like one of the most unlucky people when it comes to getting stung by jellyfish. Like you got stung again. Yes, on my face. Oh. Yeah, this was from the 10 times I was stung. They itch so bad. The 10 times I was stung was the, uh, right not yesterday, but the day before that when I went diving and then I just got stung again on my face right there. Like no one else got stung. Did you get stung? No, but I saw some like jelly tentacles floating around. Jelly tentacles? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see those. Maybe that's why you got stung. Maybe that's why I got stung because I just don't them. see them and I just swim like right into them or something because I always get stung. Like we, I got stung like 30 times on my butt in the Bahamas. We went to this like the famous statue and we went diving out there and um, Nash told me to go sit on this hand. So I went over and sat on this hand of this statue and um, turns out it was a baby jellyfish larvae nest that I sat, on, sat in and I got like 30 whelps on my butt. Hurt so bad for two weeks. That was really bad. And then just got stung like 10 times the other day and then on my face. I don't know why, like I keep getting stung by jellyfish. You nope. don't see them coming. I, I don't know, yeah. Maybe it's just like my goggles are so like fogged up all the time. I like can't see them and they just sting me. And I don't know what it is, but, but it was fun. We went diving and I saw so many colorful fish. That was really, really cool. I saw this one fish that was like, he almost looked like a snake. Did you see that one? Yeah, he almost looked like a snake. That was really cool. That was at the very end. This is cotton candy, vanilla, and uh, M&M's. Unintentionally Easter. Easter's tomorrow. Yeah. So he's got frozen yogurt. Here. Nash. Emma. Joe. This guy. <laughs> so we just got done hanging out with our friends Emma and Job. There's so much fun to hang out with, and we had lunch with them, then we got some frozen yogurt, and now we are going to head to, where are we heading at? Oh, Mermaid Caves. The Mermaid Caves! Once we got there, we saw there were so many people. I mean, look at that. I would feel so claustrophobic if I went down there, so we didn't. But this guy definitely sent it. Nash accidentally stepped in a bunch of mud, so he's washing it off in this little tide pool. My hair usually looks like wherever we drive on the island. No AC life. Windows down. Windy. Crazy ocean hair, huh? You say that's the vibe. That is the vibe, but this is my hair all the time. It just becomes one big like dreadlock, really. Into Costco we go. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, Costco in Hawaii is different than Costco on the mainland. It's like a, it's a intense experience. It is an intense experience, so that's why I have to get hyped up to come here. So my one requirement for coming to Costco. You can see how intense it is. It's literally insane. You see that? This is this is the reason why I don't like coming here. So I like half my prerequisite is getting a Coke. So that I can, you know, I'm not gonna that make it. So I need some new shoes because the ones I have are sick. They're my old navy one dollar, um, really crappy shoes. <laughs> They're so terrible. 
So my other flip flops broke the other day while I was doing a photo shoot, so I need new ones. Costco is, is a great place to go. But I've never gotten shoes from here before. Nash swears Costco by it. is a great place to go, really? No, Costco That's the for first time. shoes is a great place to go. Not uh, in general, it's still my enemy. But I'm trying out their shoes, so I'm deciding between these ones. Um, this is a flow hose. These and then these. But these definitely look more feminine. Feminine, but these, I don't know, like I like black as a color better, I think, because this I know is just going to get super dirty like these, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think, Nash? I think these. These? They're more comfy. They're more comfy? Let me try them on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to try these on, but I can't like undo the thingy, so. I want to show you something. The shrimp cheeks. I'll go look. There's the shrimp cheeks. Have you seen the shrimp cheeks before? What do you think about the shrimp cheeks? They kind of look like chicken nuts. I don't really know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so we just braved uh, the craziness of Costco, but I did get a Coke and Nash got a root beer and a churro out of it, so that's good. It's insane. I don't know. I just don't really like Costco that much. My least favorite, probably one of my least favorite activities. Just going to Costco? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's crazy. People like have no manners at all. They're like running into you with their carts. And... It's pretty much just like all rules are out the door when you go to Costco. It's like a every man for himself situation. Literally. It's like every man for themselves, like, oh, let's go. And then, yeah, it's crazy. So, so glad we're out of there. People have no sense of like, you know, maybe I should not take 15 packs of meat, you know? It's just like, let's get as much as we possibly can and just load the cart. Yeah, we saw a cart with like someone stacked, yeah, like 15 packs of meats in their cart. <laughs> uh, anyway. It wasn't just one person. There was like, I saw like five or six. So either it's an insane family barbecue or they're just going to the same time. <laughs> Maybe it's a mix, who knows. Maybe. But Nash could not resist the urge to go to Raising Cane's after this. So we're going to Raising Cane's right now. Um, I'm opting out of this one, opting out of the nugs because I don't know, I just, I don't feel very good after I eat that. We, I mean, Nash eats it like twice a week. No, I don't. Seems Maybe. like it. It's a lot. It's a lot of fried foods. I'm not a big fast food person, but... I'm not either, but I do like canes. And I like chicken. You can't resist. Canes is great. Every time we come in the vicinity of a Raising Cane, Nash is like, we gotta go. <laughs> so, Nash just got canes. Some chicken nugs. Now we are on our way home. We're not really for sure exactly what we're gonna do for the rest of the day, but that's okay. But we did want to talk about what we have been working on the last several months um, because we haven't, usually we travel a little bit more and we haven't been traveling. So uh, definitely have had some questions about what we've been working on. So I wanted to talk about that. Nash, if you want to go first and talk about the last several months since like the start of the new year, what have you been working on in terms of your career? Yeah, so I've been doing a few brand shoots. Um, and we got another one coming up here for a hotel in Vegas uh, in May, which will be a lot of fun. Um, but for the most part, I've been trying to scale back some of that stuff so I can focus on um, a cool project that I've been trying to do for a while now. But it really is. It's really cool. Yeah, so basically what it is is I've, I've realized that a lot of content creators, photographers, videographers have. Uh, 
few things what I have been working on. Um, I actually own a photography company, so that is my main job. I own the company. I do a lot of the shoots, but I also like hire out some other um, associate photographers. So that's my main income source right now, and I absolutely love it. Um, that's a huge passion of mine is photography, so love that. But that is not my plan like long term forever. That's just like um, something I love doing. And then while we're living here in Hawaii, it provides a great source of income. But um, I am actually starting a nonprofit. I am so excited. Um, I'm going to be starting this nonprofit. So um, not for sure if you guys know this, but I am a volunteer for Islands of Hope. It is a um, it's a home for women that have been rescued from a So I have been volunteering there for about a year and a half, almost two years, and absolutely love it. And I want to do more just to like help out. So I'm starting this nonprofit and um, I gotta go through all the legal stuff first, like the IRS and everything before I can start like actually fundraising. But I'm gonna be getting that up and going hopefully within the next few months. So that's what I've been working on um, behind the scenes. So my photography company, the nonprofit, and I also have my jewelry business. So I started my jewelry company about a year, I guess a little over a year ago, and I loved it, but I got really overwhelmed. Like, I don't know if a lot of people know this like all the work that goes into it but like a lot of those um pieces like the ones that are I have to like literally silversmith they can take anywhere from like four to eight hours to make depending on the piece of jewelry so it is a lot of work and I love like the marketing the photography the creative ideas the actual designing of the jewelry and even the finance side of it um but I just, I didn't really love like all of the hours into like one piece of jewelry. I'm just going to be honest with you. So I am, I still want to do my jewelry company. I'm just kind of like figuring out um, a different collection that is less time consuming, but something that I still like and really, really love. So anyways, that is what um, I've been also kind of working on, but my main focus is photography and the nonprofit and um, also have been getting more into YouTube stuff and doing uh, vlogging and content creation for uh, storytelling and things like that so the goal with that is to inspire and encourage other people um, in a lot of different ways so my storytelling and showing what we do I also help Nash when he has jobs like when we go traveling his business like for traveling is under his brand name so I help him on shoots and we have a lot of fun together. Nash is a phenomenal hotel photographer and major perks to me and his wife because I can <laughs> because free vacations. <laughs> free vacations. I mean it's still like work when we go travel to these places and we're shooting content you know professionally for these hotels they're not just like small hotels like these are like big brand name hotels like the Westin, Sandals, Hyatt um, just to name a few so they're very intense <laughs> but it also is super fun like getting to travel around and uh, help you out so yeah the, the shoots are a lot of fun what you see on Instagram looks like it's a vacation which I mean there is a lot of fun aspects of it but a lot of times they're 12 or 14 hour days and they're fun yeah. days, you know, because you're going out on boats or you're, yeah. you know, right around the hotel, but it's still like where you're still shooting, you're still on your feet for 14 hours a day. Right, um, exactly. So yeah, so it's definitely helpful when Abby helps me out. Like definitely, probably couldn't do it without her, so. Oh, thank you, that's so sweet. And it's so much fun too, and it's such like a, um, bonding time for us too because that's like one of the things that we just really hit it off at first like when we first started dating like the first was it two weeks we like 
actually started like talking to each other. We're like, hey, do you want to, you asked me if I wanted to go to the Big Island yeah. of Hawaii. And I used to live on the Big Island and he had never been before. So I was like, sure. I was thinking like we'd plan it like a month or a few months out or whatever. And he's like, are you free next week? And I was like, uh, I can be. <laughs> we literally just sent it to the Big Island and we just took a bunch of like photos and videos and we just really bond like over photography exploring places together so in traveling yeah. in traveling together I feel like there's like the stigma that it's really um, almost unattainable to travel the world to shoot for hotels to work with brands etc and that's just not true and um, Nash is well he is um, helping people to like fine-tune their skills and get into um, the industry themselves so that's he's building up his coaching business right now which is super incredible to help out other people but I think just like that mindset of well that's just so like unattainable it's just not true and yeah because it is such like a we're going through a tunnel <laughs> there it is such like a new thing with social media anyways I mean creating commercials and creating like marketing assets for hotels has been around for forever but it's just like in a different way so do you have any words of encouragement for people that just are like it seems like it's unattainable to them yeah I mean like ultimately it comes down to if you're passionate about anything you'll find a way to make it happen right so like if you are a creative person and you have a passion for creating great stories and great art, you're gonna make it happen. If you just want to drop a gold and get free stays at hotels, like yeah, you might be able to make it happen, but like it's it's ultimately you gotta be like, really passionate about it and not care about having to do like we said, 12, 14 hour days on your feet and like sometimes to be honest it's not fun. Like staying up till two in the morning is not necessarily fun. But if you have the passion to do it, then you'll do it. So, um, the, I mean, the steps in terms of tangible are pretty simple. I mean, just figure out, first of all, what your niche is, what you want to do. Um, if you want to shoot resorts, great. What kind of resorts? Are you trying to shoot for big time, big box hotels? Are you trying to shoot for boutique beach hotels? Are you trying to shoot for, you know, luxury mountain escapes that have like 12 rooms, you know? So I kind of like narrow down what
um, business and other ways of income. So I'm there to help him out and to support him. But I also have to like um, not neglect what I have as well and um, you know let things fall through the cracks. So when we're traveling sometimes to these like remote locations or when we're on the cruise and we didn't have service, like it's a lot of balancing and also in terms of our marriage, you know, I just feel like there's not a lot of people that talk about that. And we've talked to some couples like, or like openly out on social media, but it's definitely a thing like when we meet up with other couples like on these trips and we're talking to them and they're like, oh yeah, like we've totally had to figure it out like, you know, because there are like 12, 14, 16 hour days and you still have a marriage to maintain and you still have work to do. Like I still have my own work to do. So that's been a huge like balance that we have worked really hard to try to figure out. Like the vast majority of having that common understanding because like when Abby first started this she didn't understand the uh the extent that some of these days go you know of the 12 hour days like I, I think maybe you know she thought like some other people think that it's basically just glorified vacation you take a few pictures um but it's I've been not. with you since the beginning though since you started doing all your yeah, photo shoots yes for the hotels but I was doing press shoots before that so it's, it's been kind of like setting the expectation of like, hey, it's, it's going to be a long time. If you need to take time to do your own thing, that's great. But let's just like have a mutual understanding of what that is. So that, yeah. so that I don't like expect her to be helping me at that time. And she doesn't expect me to just let her do something on a whim uh, without letting me know that it's not, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's just basically like communicating expectations beforehand. So let's just give an example that might make more sense. So like when we were on the cruise ship, um, I was still, you know, obviously running my whole business. And so I had to call clients and do scheduling and figure out photographers and do editing and stuff like that. So um, I had a lot to do, but we figured out that for me, mornings work better. So, um, I think, was it a few times out of the week? I was just like, I blocked it off. Like, I blocked off my time that I, I had to work. And I was like, he likes to do sunrise, drone shots, photo shoots, or whatever. And I was like, everything that you do not need me for, you need to do on these days because this is my scheduled time to work. So, and it's also my scheduled time to, like, not only work, but just take care of other things I need, to, you know, need to do to, like, call my family and just you know relax or like whatever it is that was like my time and he needed to go take care of all the stuff that he needed to do without me during that time so that worked out mm -hmm. really nicely which is also another huge reason to have a shot list going into something like this like if you're it's another tip if you're trying to do content full-time and you're just winging it and you have no idea what's going on then that is like a guaranteed way to waste a ton of time and if you're traveling with a significant other or wife or husband or whatever, yeah. it's a uh, guaranteed way to make them super frustrated and pissed off. So um, if you have a, a shot list of like, hey, this is what we actually need for this project. And I'm not gonna like add a bunch of random stuff. Yeah. This is what we actually need. And this is the times we need to do it. Yeah. And this is like the approximate amount of time it's going to take. That, that helps set the expectation for everybody involved. Um, yeah. And you're able to schedule around it too. Yeah, yeah, that really helped a lot. Yeah. Um, 
just like setting expectations and stuff because if you go into honestly like if you go to a trip and you're in the wing it mode it is a recipe for arguments I'm just gonna be completely honest with you because if you're just like oh we're gonna wing it and it's fine well what happens is like you know everyone's expectations are differently so nothing was discussed ahead of time and then it's go 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 and then there's no time for like just you and then there's no time for like the other person if they have like another job and then it's all just oh let's just uh film everything and hopes we get something and that's not a plan and that's not good for business either so no definitely like have a shot list a plan and that's good for um, the business it's good for both of us individually with our businesses and also our marriage and you get better stuff anyways because you have to like think of the story ahead of time and think of how it's going to play out yeah and intentionally get shots as opposed to just like randomly shooting stuff and like hoping it works in the future yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, think of a movie, right? Or a commercial or any kind of production. They're not just going out there and winging it. They have like a <laughs> script and they have, uh, you know, a script supervisor to make sure they're on track. And they have, um, you know, a shot list and they know exactly what they're doing. And they also have a schedule. So just operate it that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's a huge tip is like to any married couples or people in relationships in general, like that go on trips for content creation or you're working with hotels or whatever it is um, to discuss expectations ahead of time with your significant other have a game plan and block off like certain times for if the other person needs to do something like the other spouse or other person in the relationship should respect that because I mean essentially I am taking like it is a vacation for me too like I get to do all these like super fun stuff but it is work and it is also time away from my own job so um, if Nash didn't respect that that would be a big problem <laughs> if he just demanded me to go on all these trips and film everything for him and he didn't allow me time to work that would be a big problem but he does allow me time to work so um, thank goodness because I can still have a job <laughs> things that I'm passionate about while also helping him and of course making memories and stuff in the process but it just makes everything so much easier yeah. so yeah that's my advice